Hello! This will be the first of our two topics talking about link lists. So let's start with some motivation. As we've seen, extensible arrays are very cool, but they are not perfect. So let's consider a potential use case, say an inventory program. This program needs to keep track of millions of items that are uh, going into and out of our inventory. And uh, with all these items, extending our array list could be a slow operation due to the fact that we have to copy over all the elements in the array. I know that we saw that it averages out to constant time, but an individual operation might still be much slower than that. Furthermore, our array list is not very efficient if we're adding or removing elements from the beginning or the middle of our array because of all the shifting uh, over of elements that's required. And so if our inventory program or any program uh, needs to frequently, say, remove from the start of a list, extensible arrays might be a poor choice because that's not an operation that they do particularly efficiently. And so in this lecture, we're going to develop the concept of a link list. And this is going to be a dynamic structure that grows and shrinks exactly when necessary, and those elements can be added and removed in constant time regardless of the position. And in data structures, everything is a trade-off. We are not going to get we're not going to get anything for free, so there's a cost to this dynamic behavior. And in particular, we're going to lose constant time random access. That if we want to jump into uh, jump into an access uh, an element at sort of a, uh, an arbitrary position within our list, that's not something that linked lists are going to, to do that efficiently. But uh, that sort of analysis uh, will come later. Let's get into the concept of a linked list. So with arrays, if we were going to store an array of six integers, it might be something like uh, we have our list uh, variable and arrays being an object, our variable stores a reference to our array in memory, and arrays are a contiguous chunk of memory that hold the, the slots for the, our items in the array. So uh, 0 and then 2, 40, 23, 14, and 72, and these would have indexes of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And these indexes are both the kind of order that these elements are present in the array and also how we refer to them, you know, index 0, index 1, and so on. But let's say we took these slots in our array and just sort of scattered them throughout memory. They're no longer this kind of chunk of adjacent slots in our system's memory. So we break them up and we have our 23, 2, 40, 0, 14, 72. And we'd still need some way to connect them to each other because our linked list is still going to have these elements in a particular order. And so we might have, we know that zero is the start of our, of our list, and that zero connects to two, and then two goes to 40, and then 40 to 23, and 23 to 14, and 14 to 72, and 72 is the end of our list. And so in this picture, we've taken the elements that were stored into our array. There are, they're all now, they're, we're no longer making the assumption that they're in this uh, contiguous chunk of memory, and instead they're connected in some way to each other, forming a chain of list elements. And uh, each of these arrows represents a, a reference to some other place in memory. So our first element 
of our list refers to the second element and so on. So each of these boxes here are going to be what we'll call a link list node. And a basic list node is going to look something like this. We're going to have some data, say the integer 18, and we're going to have a reference, an arrow, next that's going to refer to the next node in our list. If we were to write this out as a Java class, we have our class list node, and it's going to have two fields. Uh, our data, an integer, and Our next field, which is a reference to the next node in our list. And I really want to emphasize that this is kind of an interesting and powerful idea in computer science. That that what we have defined here is a recursive data type or recursive data structure and that the list node includes in it a reference to another list node. And uh, so the, kind of the definition of this list node uh, involves itself and this is uh, why we would say that it's a recursive data type. And this idea of objects having references to other objects of the same type is something that we'll see again and again. It's a very powerful technique. And if you remember that object variables are references, that clarifies that this field next is not actually another list node itself, right? If a list node had an entire list node inside of it, which in turn had an entire list node inside of it and so on, this would get infinitely nested nodes. But this next is an arrow, is a reference to the next node in our list. If we have, say, some code, uh, list equals new, oops, new list node, we have our variable list and it refers to a node that has data and next, but we haven't given data and next any values, so let's do that. We could say list.data is, let's make it three, List.next equals new list node. So now we've given it data of three and we've created a new node that follows our initial node. And so we're in this situation and when we work with lists, uh, when we work with linked lists, we need to be careful to kind of keep track of, of exactly what we're talking about. So our variable list stores a reference to the first node, and we can access the parts of that node with this dot notation. So list.data and list.next. And list.next is a way to, to access this reference which itself points to uh, the another node, the next one in our list. Uh, and so we can continue uh, setting up our, our list with a couple more lines. We can say list.next.data 
is 7, and list.next.data is going to let us kind of follow this chain of arrows with this chain of dots in order to put 7 into uh, the, the data for this node. And list.next.next, .next. we can create a new node for that. And I'll draw that like this just to give myself some more room. And so our, we've now created a new list node for this next pointer to refer to. And uh, we can now, again, we're kind of reviewing the parts of this. We have list. We have, uh, so list refer is the reference to this node. List.next is the reference to this node. And list.next.next .next is the reference to this node. And uh, we can uh, set up this final, this final node with list.next.next.data is 12. And we'll stop the madness here at a mere three nexts and not create a new node and set this to null. So we put in data of 12 and a next of null. We, for this list, we were kind of manually setting up the different pieces. We created a new node and then um, uh, set its, its data and its next field and then set the fields for the nodes after that. And so you can see that we kind of are building up this chain of, of kind of following these arrows, following the references to the next node. But if we have more than a few elements traversing our list, kind of going through all the nodes just by writing next more and more times, that's, we're not gonna to wanna to do that. That would be a little crazy. And so, um, what, uh, what we'll do instead is we'll be able to use uh, a loop in order to traverse this chain of references uh, to, to go through all the nodes in the list. So let me erase. And let's say we have the following list. I'll call it fibs. Whew. All right, we have this five node long list. Uh, called fibs uh, with the data one, one, two, three, five. A bit of Fibonacci sequence for you there. So, what if we want to uh, traverse this list, uh, go through and uh, print out the elements, uh, the, the data at each node? Uh, we could have uh, fibs. Dot net, uh, fibs dot data fibs dot next dot data fibs dot next dot next dot data fibs dot next dot next dot next dot data and that uh, but we can do better than that and in particular uh, the way that we'll typically traverse this uh, uh, linked list is using a loop and uh, a temporary variable to kind of keep track of which node we're currently on. So let me add to this picture another variable current that refers to the first node in our list, and we would set this up by saying List node current equals fibs. So current, its type is, is list node and equals fibs says, all right, it's going to uh, be the same reference that fibs is. It's, the same, it's, it's an arrow pointing to the same place. So now we have a variable that is saying, all right, we're, we're currently on the first node in the list and
we're going to use a while loop to go through the nodes in this list. And what condition would we put inside this while loop? What could we use, what property of our nodes here could we use to figure out when we have reached the end of the list? Well, uh, something that, that stands out to me is that the next of our final node, how we distinguish the node at the end of our list is that it's next is null. There is no next node after that. And so we're actually going to say while the current node uh, that we're at does not equal null, we'll keep going. And so we're just going to, and our strategy here will be to move our reference current along through each node of the list until we, uh, uh, until we end up having it be null. And kind of what we're doing in here is going to process the next node in our list. So what does this actually look like? Well, the thing that I want to do with each node is print out the data at the current node. So at the start, we're going to print out one. So we're going to print out the data at the current node. And after we've printed out the data at the current node, that's the extent of what we're doing with the nodes in this list. And so now we want to move current to the next node in our list by saying current equals current dot next. So this will say, all right, replace this with the same reference that the current node's next is. So it says current's going to refer to the same thing that next refers to. So now current is referring to the next node in the list. We print out one again. So, so far we've printed one and then one. And we again update current, current equals current dot next. We print out the value there, that's two. We update current to be current dot next. Print out the value there. Update current to current dot next. Print out five, update current to current dot next. Current dot next is null. So now current has been set to null, and our condition while current does not equal null, this condition is false, and we exit the loop. And so this loop, we first declared a, uh, a variable to be to refer to the first node in the list. And then had a loop while our variable isn't null, while it hasn't kind of moved past the end or or been set to this, this null value that signifies the end of the list, we process each node. And so this uh, operation, I will refer to it as traversing the list as uh, kind of going through the elements of the list. And this verb traversing, uh, or uh, the, a list traversal, is uh, a term that will come up with other kinds of data structures that have these uh, chains or networks of references. So, uh, one, uh, uh, one, one variation of this while loop would be 
uh, to combine all of this uh, into a for loop. So just to show you what that looks like, we could we would take the increment and the initialization and cram it all into a single for statement. I need more room than that. So we'd say for our list node current equals fibs, current does not equal null is our test for when the loop ends, and our loop update is current equals current dot next. And so we could kind of take all take all those pieces and put them in uh, into a for loop, and it would be an equivalent loop. I happen to find the while loop version a kind of more readable way of writing this code, uh, but that's a matter of personal taste. All right, uh, there are uh, a number of practice problems where uh, you're going to practice these kind of list node manipulations. Uh, and I encourage you to take a look at those. And then in the next topic, we'll see how we use these nodes to actually create a, a linked list data structure, which is made up of these nodes. So until then.